Hi, welcome to Barkhart Bookshelf, a video series about books and the drinks they inspire. My name is Elias, and today we're talking about Amberlow by Lara Elena Donnelly. Amberlow is one of my absolute favorite novels, and it's been a tremendous joy this past week to revisit and reread four and a half years after it was released and I first read the book. I've been pleasantly surprised, or not so surprised, to discover that I love it just as much now as I did when I first read it. And it is, coincidentally, a perfect fit for what we do here at Barkhart Bookshelf, with a glamorous cast of cabaret performers, spies, and smugglers, other members of the Amberlow City Demi Monde, it really does make uh, a wonderful uh, inspirational palette for uh, coming up with cocktail ideas. And I just cannot speak highly enough of this book. It is full of duplicity and uh, wonderful descriptions of food and drink, beautiful clothing, um, really phenomenal and lushly described theatrical pieces as well as um, some good old-fashioned spy craft. But even though I could talk about the book for hours and have, we've got a couple of bottles here on the bookshelf, so why don't we get into uh, this week's drink and we can talk a little more as we go. So. Our drink this week is the Bumblebee Blaze, a riff on the classic Bee's Knees inspired by uh, the people and the characteristics of Amberlo. And we're going to start with a little bit of absinthe just in our glass here. So just a little bit. And you're going to want to swirl that to, to coat the glass. This is a Swiss absinthe. It's an absinthe blanche. Um, so it's not going to be as green as some of the other absinths that you see, absinthe vert. Um, but it is still going to have that real potency of wormwood, anise, licorice flavor. So we're going to want to coat the glass, but as you can see, there is still a little bit of liquid in there and we'll just discard the excess. And now that our glass is prepared, we can get on to our remaining ingredients. So Amberlow City is a port city there on, uh, at the mouth of a river and um, has a lot of trade, a lot of people passing through the docks, a real international sort of city and a metropolitan area. And so we're going to start with a navy strength gin. This is going to be a little bit higher alcohol gin um, designed to travel on ships originally and it's going to really get some nice heat while having those sort of herbal qualities. We want three quarters of an ounce of that in there for the port city of Amberlow. Next, we've got our Amontillado Sherry, one of my favorite ingredients for uh, fall, um, one that I've been using a lot lately, and uh, it's going to bring, again, some of that sort of seaside air. Um, these sherries are made in the city of Jerez and are going to get some of that sort of sea air from the Mediterranean, so there is a slight, almost briny quality and depth of flavor in there. For that, we are again going to get three quarters of an ounce. Good. And we get our sherry. And then we'll move on to some of our non-alcoholic ingredients. Another fall favorite, as we've seen uh, recently, is the lemon cordial that I've made. In a traditional bee's knees, you'll use fresh lemon juice, but for fall um, and for depth of flavor, I am really liking the lemon cordial. It's just got that extra bit of richness because you have the lemon oils in there as well from the peels. And we'll get three quarters of an ounce in there. As you might have guessed by now, we are doing equal proportions of all of our ingredients. Whoops! <laughs> Sometimes the bottles don't cooperate. And then finally, 
for our main ingredients. We've got a honey syrup. Uh, it's going to bring sweetness. It's going to bring that sort of richness of honey. And uh, it's going to really balance things out, some of the sharper ingredients. And we'll get three quarters of an ounce of the honey syrup in there. And then we have one final touch. Because uh, the novel is hot, hot, hot um, in a number of ways, and this is the bumblebee blaze, we do need to bring just a little bit of heat beyond that sort of uh, higher alcohol of the Navy Strength Gin. And so for that, I have a honey hot pepper liqueur. Um, we're going to get a bar spoon of that in there. If you don't have something like this on hand, then you can do um, a couple of dashes of a hot pepper bitters. I'll include a link to some suggestions in that category as well. It's really providing not necessarily flavor so much as it is texture. You're going to feel the heat of the pepper on your lips as you drink it um, and really sort of get some of that warming burn, which is nice for the fall especially. As always, we add our ice last. So we've got all of our ingredients in the shaker. Get our ice cubes down in there. Wonderful. Get one more. And take our big tin, cap it, seal it with the flat of your hand, like so, keeping this open area, and shake. And you can see, got some frost on the tins. It's chilled. We've shaken for about 10 seconds. And you give that a tap on the side to loosen it up and open. Then, Hawthorne strainer. Get that. Got the Aston Martin of Hawthorne strainers in here. Uh, pure luxury for Amber Lowe. And then we'll strain our Bumblebee Blaze into the Nick and Nora cocktail glass that we've rinsed with that absinthe. So there you have it. Uh, the Bumblebee Blaze, a bee's knees riff for the city of Amberlo and Lara Elena Donnelly's novel, Amberlo. It is one of my absolute favorites. It is available now. Lara's next book, a perfume thriller base notes, will be released early in 2022. I've already got my copy pre-ordered and can't wait for it to arrive. So definitely check out Amber Lowe, check out Base Notes, um, try the drink, let me know what you think. Remember to like and subscribe. As always, there is a link to a written version of the recipe in the description down below. Um, and so until next time, cheers.